Okay, I, hi, I'm Kristen Ripley. I'm here today at TALIS, and we're going to go through the process of marbling paper using the Turkish Ibru process. The first thing that we're going to do today is alum our paper. Um, today we're going to be using the 24 pound Mohawk paper. And in this stack of paper here, I've marked an X on all the papers so that we know what is the back side of the paper. Um, we're going to be using these alum crystals. Uh, we're going to make this into a liquid solution here to coat our papers. If we don't alum the paper, then the pigment won't bond to the fibers in the paper. So um, we are going to follow some recipes for our alum. And the, the recipe that um, I usually make alum in large quantities, so for every gallon of water you have, you would use eight tablespoons or one third of a cup of the alum crystal powder. powder. Um, if you wanted to make smaller batches of alum, you could also use um, one teaspoon of alum to one cup of water. Um, a tray this size will hold about two gallons of uh, water and we're gonna be uh, aluming our paper by dipping it into this vat in a second here. So, uh, one pound of album uh, yields about 24 tablespoons, um, and you need eight tablespoons per gallon. So it's about one one pound bound will give you three gallons of alum. So um, what I've done here is I've I've gone ahead and I've measured out our um, one third of a cup of alum, uh, or eight tablespoons here. And I'm going to pour this into my one gallon jug. Uh, and then I'm just going to, this is some water that I just recently boiled. And I'm only going to fill up the jug a little bit, um, basically to give the, the alum a jump start to um, kind of melt and sink in there. I don't want to fill up the entire jug with boiling water because you can see it starts to warp the plastic of my jug. So now I'm going to take it over to the sink and fill the remainder of the jug up with water. Okay, so I, we put our one third of a cup of alum powder in this gallon jug and with some uh, nearly boiling water we poured a little bit, uh, about an inch of boiling water at the bottom of our gallon jug just to help melt the alum crystals to give them a jump start and then we shaked it up really well and then took it over to our cold water tap and filled the rest of the jug up with cold water. Um, so now we're ready to go. There's two different ways of applying alum. Um, uh, first I'm going to just pour my alum into this tray here and um, usually when I'm uh, preparing paper in bulk, uh, a lot of sheets at once, I, I like to do the quick method of aluming my paper by just soaking it in the tray here. Uh, and again, I'm just checking that I have a pencil mark, an X on the back of every sheet of paper here, because I want to make sure that when I do go to marble, that um, I'm marbling on the alum side of the paper, otherwise the pigment won't stick. It's also, at this point, it's important to wear gloves. Um, uh, alum isn't a toxic chemical, but it will dry out your skin and you don't want to breathe it. So when you are using it in the powder form, it's best to wear a dust mask. So um, I've found it's easiest to, when you're aluming, to hold opposing corners and you're just laying it down into the vat. You want to make sure there's no air bubbles in between your paper and the alum bath. If there's an air bubble, that'll be a place where there's no alum on the paper and therefore no pigment will stick. So um, I've alumed my paper here. I'm gonna just let it drain off for a second. And now I'm gonna take it over to my drying rack. Um, alum will stain your floor, so it's a good idea to cover your floor with a drop cloth if you don't want it to have white splotches all over it. So the second way to alum a sheet of paper is using a sponge. And this method, it does, you can see I have 200 sheets of paper here. Um, it's too time consuming to alum paper with a sponge when you have that many papers, but 
if you're doing small quantities, um, the sponge method works fine. And you're just, you can also use a brush. A brush or a sponge works well. And it, it's good to work from the center and go outwards to the edge. You're trying to create as little amounts of wrinkle as possible. Um, if you're doing the sponge method, uh, instead of using a drying rack, what you can do is uh, you would alum two sheets of paper and the two sides of the alum would face each other like this. You'd put a blotter on both sides of the paper and then in between sheets of card cardboard and weight it. Um, this helps to keep your paper flatter, less wrinkly than using a drying rack, but it's a lot more time consuming and requires a lot uh, more expensive materials like blotters. So if you use a drying rack, then you might just have to iron out some of the wrinkles.